Howdy, AP Precal. It's Miss Cash. Today, I want to work through Mr. Passwater's notes on 312. Um, so thank you for those notes. Um, I have already taught this, and I have my version of the notes. Um, but as he makes these available, I like to, to teach through them anyway. Um, so the first thing is what we call the Pythagorean identity. And, um, and that comes from the fact that we can form a right triangle um, where its x-coordinate here is cosine of the angle theta, its y-coordinate is sine of the angle theta, and the hypotenuse on the unit circle is always 1. So we know from um, Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in other words, we know that um, the x-coordinate, cosine of theta squared, plus the y-coordinate, sine theta squared, is equal to the radius squared. Um, but we can be a little more, um, we can write this a little more concisely um, by saying, and I typically write the sine value first, we can say sine squared plus cosine squared theta, always include your variable, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Now in our, um, at my school, we had a, um, a pre-cal teacher who was epic. She was this legendary, she was this shorter, grandmotherly woman, very Southern, and she referred to this identity as the Big Daddy. And so we nicknamed this one the Big Daddy. It shows up so much in, um, in pre-cal that and it, it kept coming back and coming back. At first, my kids are like, every year, my kids are like, Miss Gosh, what are you talking about? Why? And they give me these looks like, you're really gonna call this the Big Daddy? And then by the time the test rolls around, they're saying, oh yeah, don't you say it's the Big Daddy? Here it is, and, and they are so casual with it. So anyway, we give it a nickname um, because it is so very important. Well, one thing that we can do with that um, identity is that we can divide through, well, let's divide through everybody by cosine squared. And then this gives me sine over cosine is tangent. So sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared, which shows up here. And then cosine squared over cosine squared is one and one over cosine squared is secant squared. And so this is another version of the Pythagorean identity. Um, I also will manipulate uh, with my kids when I teach this. Oh, here, here it is. Um, I'll come through and say, okay, well, let's solve this for sine squared. So that's one minus cosine squared. And then I will say, well, let's solve this for cosine squared, which is equal to one minus sine squared. Okay, and so we kind of have three versions of that same identity. And then we can do the same thing here. This is one is equal to secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. Or we can say tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus one. Um, then we can also come back to the big daddy. Um, let's do it here. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. We can divide everybody by sine squared. Okay, and when I do, sine divided by sine is one. Where did it go? It was here. Um, can you see that? Can you see both on my screen? Okay, and then cosine over sine is, is cotangent, so cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared. One over sine squared is cosecant squared. And so the third of our um, Pythagorean, so we have, the way that I teach my kids is that they have one they have to have memorized, and we nickname this one the Big Daddy. Then we can generate the other two by either dividing by cosine squared or dividing by sine squared, and then we can manipulate everything um, with subtraction. Um, and so this would be one is equal to cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. We could also say that cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta minus one. So you can kind of think of it as you can think of it as one Pythagorean identity, and then you manipulate to find all the others. You can think of it as three, and then you can manipulate, or you could think of it as nine in total. Okay, um, this we use all the time, um, and it becomes very important as we keep going. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? To be honest with you, this next part, I don't do a good job of teaching. It's never really showed up in my books, um, but I think this next idea is a really important in calculus. Let me make that um, another video. Does he have any examples that we should look at that relate back to example two? I'm not sure if he had example one. Sorry, this is what happens when I don't plan ahead. Um, no, let's see, the figure... Okay, um, he doesn't give us a good example of using one of these, but, um, I could... We could do something like, um, um, we could say, 
let me make one up. We could say simplify, um, so, no, I wanted um, simplify um, cotangent theta plus um, tangent theta. Okay, and so if the, what we want, so what I've seen AP ask, um, what I, my, in my IB world, they'll often tell you what it equals and then they expect you to prove it. In my, um, in the AP world, what I have seen is they would say, write this in terms of something with, with only using sine and cosine or only something like that. But let me show you, um, when I tell my kids to simplify, I usually give them a, an answer bank across the top. Um, but so here we go. This is cosine theta over sine theta plus this is sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, so then the next thing I wanna do when I'm adding fractions is get a common denominator. And this one, so if you were to write out every step, Uh, you can go look at my other videos on how I teach identities. I love identities. I think they're so stinking fun. Um, and I should have a lot of resources for how to prove them. Um, but I'm just going to work through his notes. Okay, so this gives us the same denominator of cosine theta times sine theta and a numerator of cosine squared plus sine squared. And what we just learned is that sine squared plus cosine squared or cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. That's the big daddy. So I should put equal signs as I go. And so that's 1 over cosine theta times sine theta. And then this can be written as 1 over cosine theta times 1 over sine theta. 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. And so it could be that they ask us to write this in terms of secant and cosecant only. And so this cotangent plus tangent would be equivalent to secant theta times um, cosecant theta. Okay, come back for the next video with the inverse trigonometric identities, and we'll see. I'm, maybe I should think about that one before I start, because I've never taught it, um, which probably tells you I should have. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll learn together. Go practice, subscribe, keep watching, all those good things.